Kadri, 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 Nazem Kadri ends up winning it in overtime for the Colorado Avalanche after Andre Vasilevsky, who is just built different, stands on his head. It is not enough for the Bolts as the Avalanche, who are also built different, end up taking this one and a series lead three to one all the Avs had to do was take one game on the road against the bolts and the colorado avalanche do that tonight let's go ahead and talk about all the amazing storylines in this game right now storyline number one has to be the unbelievable flip of pressure between the first period and the second period in the first period it was all bolts 17 to 4 in the shot count darcy kemper was looking strong and solid i mean yes there was a goal that happened within the first 45 seconds it's actually one of the fastest the schools and Stanley Cup playoff history, but Darcy Kemper cools a cucumber, chills out, stops the barrage of shots. I mean, there are 17 shots in the first, so he stands on his head doing his best Andre Vasilevsky impersonation, and they end up going into the second period only down a goal. Heading into the second period, the score ends up tied 1-1, to but the Colorado Avalanche put their foot on the gas 17-9 to in shots for the Avs. The Avs control the second period, but a weak goal, a flutterer goal there by Victor Head Edmund ends up beating Darcy Kemper. There he is. He's back. And it is a 2-1 lead for the Bolts. And people are thinking, all right, this is going to be Bolts hockey. They are on the march. Tampa Bay ends up flipping the script again, out shooting the Colorado Avalanche 10-6 in the third period. But it is Andrew Cogliano and the fourth line of the Colorado Avalanche that end up winning this one. There's been a lot of talk about Corey Perry, Pat Maroon, and Bellamare, the fourth line of the Tampa Bay Lightning. But unfortunately, for them, it's the fourth line of the Colorado Avalanche who steps up with the heroics again, and we have seen a lot of fourth line heroics from both of these teams on their way to the Stanley Cup, have we not? Really nice job done by Cogliano to tie that game and take it into OT. OT is completely another story as the one-handed man, Nazem Kadri, ends up winning it in overtime, but not until 12 shots are put on net against Andre Vasilevsky. He makes three or four giant saves. The post comes out makes a massive save for him the bar comes out and makes a massive save for him hey look we know these aren't saves it goes ping it sounds amazing but you know what ping is a golf club ping is a shot off the post and ping is a puck on net that is not on net doesn't count it's wide just means the goalie is in good position right but the abs overwhelming force and speed in the overtime they say you know what don't worry about it I'll just beat him now. Uh, I'll just beat him now. Avs fans, Bolts fans, thank you for being here. We have at least one more game to go. Maybe another three to go. Bolts fans, I want to know down below, do you think they can create the comeback? Let me know down below in the comments. Avs, let me know if you think this one is over, baby. Relax. It's over, baby. And... If you can't think of a comment down below, go ahead, leave your favorite emoji. Don't forget to subscribe. We just passed 10,000 subscribers. Unbelievable. Thank you very much for being here. It's been a wild ride here for Coach Ryan D at Hawk Garbage Sports. Smash that thumbs up button. We're seeing a ton of likes, likes all day, every day. A big shout out to our members on our members page as well, too. All of you in the executive suites in the lower bowl. You guys are beauties. This has been a lot of fun. And don't forget, the Discord is free. The link is down below. Click that link down below. We got 350 Discord members chatting up about hockey right now. Avs fans, Bolts fans, join us. And Avs fans, hey, the Bolts fans are outnumbering you in the Discord group right now. So go ahead, smash that link down below. Download the free app Discord to your phone. Get started today. You know we love going to our favorite sites, Natural Stat Trick. You can see here the Avalanche, especially after that incredible salvo in the overtime period, end up out playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. They win in all key categories. The Lightning although did win in the high danger chance category. So almost 50-50, 10 to 11 here. Really good job there by the Avs mounting the comeback. We can also see how deadly the Tampa Bay Lightning shooting percentage was today. They got all up in Kemper's kitchen, but he ended up turning pucks away. Andre Vasilevsky, when we switch over to the Colorado Avalanche, was an absolute monster of the game. The guy that's built different ends up keeping a billion pucks out of the net is what it feels like. This was a shooter's fest. This was a scorer's fest, but the goalies 
these really did put on a clinic. We even head over to the Deservo Winnow Meter over on MoneyPuck.com. This was almost a 50-50 game again that deserved Winnow Meter favoring the Colorado Avalanche 57%. So 57% of the time when you play this game, the Avs are going to win. And that has to do with overtime. I mean, it was 50-50 before that, but overtime really tipped the scales there for the Avs, did it not? 36 seconds into the period. Take a look at this amazing save there by Darcy Kemper. Puck ends up going on net. Massive rebound ends up coming out. No idea how Hagel doesn't put this puck in the back of the net at this point in time. Puck's going to roll out. Avalanche do a great job here. This is amazing. I love seeing this. Look what they do. They get in and they tie up sticks. Look, nobody is looking just for puck. They are making sure that they have sticks tied up. They are stick lifting in front of that net. They're not cross-checking. They are doing a great job at protecting their goalie, Darcy Kemper, here, right here. The puck ends up going over the corner. Really nice job by the Avs. And then it's just a quick hard shot on net. And unfortunately, that hard shot on net knocks the helmet off of Darcy Kemper. And that puck is going to bounce out and end up being put in the back of the net against the helmetless Darcy Kemper. I don't know what more the man needs to do at this point in time. Really nice hands there by Sorelli. He puts it in and Kemper puts face, life, and limb in front of that shot for his team. But it is all for naught. It's a good goal. And why is it a good goal, you ask? Because the NHL is stupid. That's why. Their rules are stupid. The NHL is stupid. I don't know what else you want me to tell you. Look, I thought the goal was great. But the rules are very simple. If the play is one simple motion, they're not going to blow the whistle. There is no way they are going to blow the whistle for a goalie's helmet coming off on a quick rebound like that. Do I like it? No, I don't have to like it. I don't like most of the things the NHL does with its officiating and its rules. But unfortunately, it's the rules, so it ends up being a good goal. What would I like to see? If a goalie's helmet comes off, if a glove comes off, realistically, if any equipment for the goalie comes off, it should just be, that's it, dead puck, end of story. You shouldn't have to put your face in front of a puck like that. But hey, the guys from back in the day would say you would. Regardless... It's a goal, and it's a beauty by Sorelli. Unfortunately, also for the Bolts this game, they lose Eric Chernak. Eric Chernak ends up playing about seven minutes of the game. Then they have to run five defensemen for the rest of the game. That is exhausting against the powerhouse Avalanche team. But hey, the Avalanche just overwhelm you at the end of the day. So it isn't up to the Avs to make sure they're playing against a full and healthy team. It's just up to the Avs to win the game. So great job by Colorado there at that point. Unfortunate loss for the Bolts. And now, after that first goal, let's go ahead and take a look at the Colorado answer back, shall we? After three or four shots on net, this unbelievably dominant power play of the Colorado Avalanche end up picking up the puck. It's Nathan McKinnon with the puck over here on the boards. And it's going to be a couple nice bounces, but nice bounces only occur when you're in the right position. Beautiful speed and footwork here by McKinnon. He was on fire today, skating faster than I've ever seen him skate. He ends up putting that puck needle on a thread right through the center of the ice over here to Miko Rantanen. Really nice work there by McKinnon. Absolutely head up skill. When you take a look at what he's able to do with this pass, take a look at McKinnon's head. Look where he's looking. He is not looking at that puck. The reason he is able to thread it through one, two, and three sticks is because his head is up the entire way. He knows where his buddy is and he's going to move that puck player to player, widening the zone on the power play like we've been talking about all series. Rantanen's going to end up picking up that puck and making a really quick shot here on net, so he ends up putting it right onto Vasilevsky, and we talked about these pads. All pads in the NHL now are made to kick out big rebounds, but it's a funky little shot here by Rantanen. He doesn't actually get all of it, and because it's a soft shot, it's a favorable bounce here for the Avalanche, so take a look. It ends up rocketing, just rocketing off his pad, and you can see, even on a weak shot, that puck was projected to end up way over here. That's the point of these pads these days. What they don't want with these pads is the puck ending up somewhere right around his crease like it unfortunately does here. And it ends up right on this crease because it ends up hitting McKinnon on the skates. And then big man power forward Gabe Landeskog doing his job, picking up the loose puck that's right here and banging it in behind Vasilevsky. Once again, is it a lucky bounce? Yes, but it isn't lucky when you're going to the net, doing the right things like they end up doing, and you end up shoveling it in because you're in good position like Landis Cog is. There was nothing lucky about what McKinnon did with that puck. There was nothing lucky about the Miko shot. There's nothing lucky about Landis Cog putting it in. There is a little bit of a favorable bounce, but that's why we say pucks on net, baby. Now, the other key narrative for this game is that the Bolts power play stinks. And does the Bolts power play stink or is the abs penalty kill that good? Whatever direction you want to take it, 
is fine because at the end of the day, the Tampa Bay Lightning had their chances on the power play in the first two periods. They did nothing with them. They looked disjointed. They looked old. They looked slow. I know they're not old, guys. I get it. They just looked old. They looked slow. I did not like their power plays one bit. They looked like the better team five on five for a lot of this game, but they did not look like the better team on special teams and special teams is such a massive part of winning a Stanley Cup. The Tampa Bay Lightning have been unable to capitalize on that and there is something in the water down there in Florida because in Florida, power plays just seem to dry up. And a quick little correction on that goal. They ended up giving this one to McKinnon. I initially thought it was Landis Cog. When you take a look at the site, they actually have both. You can see the stat change that they ended up making there. So that's McKinnon's goal. But it doesn't change anything that we broke down because Landis Cog was still right in the perfect position. So it ends up going off McKinnon skates. Landis Cog doesn't get to touch it. Great goal by McKinnon. Great goal by the Avs, regardless of who ends up putting it in the net. Simple little D to D play. Pucks right here. Hedman ends up pivoting open, taking this pass. And then he's just going to go end to end and put a small little shot on net here. When your superstars notice that, you know what, we're getting outplayed. And at this point in time in the second period, I thought Colorado was outplaying them. A little bit of a change, but that change doesn't mean much right now. Take a look at the big man shake and bake. What I don't understand here, you guys have heard me talk about this all series. Look, you got one, two, three three, four guys all backing in. This is what speed will do. This is why speed kills. Hedman may not be the fastest guy in the league, but he's fast enough. I do not understand this gap. Absolutely everybody has backed into the zone. When you back into the zone like this, you just give way too much gap, way too much room. Hedman ends up exploiting it. So not a great job done defensively here by the Avalanche. And you can see this is why gap is no good. We call this being flat footed. Take a look. This isn't a skating scans. You end up reaching in. There's nowhere you can go. And now you have all of this. This gap to work with as well if you're headman. So you don't want to make flat footed plays like that. Flat footed plays either end up in the box or you end up burnt. Headman keeps it on the back end and he just shovels a puck towards Kemper here that ends up beating him in. Look, that puck should have been stopped, but that puck never should have got to him because the defense of the Colorado Avalanche can do better. And take a look. It is our favorite defenseman. It is Norris Trophy winning Kale McCarr. Well, oh, Little bit looking human there. I'm not sure what happened to the gap, but nice goal there by Hedman. Not a great save by Kemper. Cogliano, Sturm, and Helm end up doing it on this play. Look, you got good positioning here. I like Corey Perry. The fourth line beats the fourth line here. So like I said, there's been a lot of talk about the fourth line here from the Tampa Bay Lightning, but you know what? The fourth line from the Colorado Avalanche do it. So they end up moving it to the top here, right? We call it lengthening, and then they're going to go ahead and they're going to widen the zone. Why do they want to do that? Well, it's very simple because the Bolts are going to try to cut the ice in half just like they have right now. They want to play tight in this zone. That is good defensive zone positioning. So the defense don't want you to lengthen or widen. The offense is doing everything they can to lengthen or widen. So they end up moving that puck over, and now what we end up seeing is a shift. So remember, Corey Perry was our puck support guy. He ends up shifting over. Who got lost was Nick Paul. Now Corey Perry has to go out. That's a problem because that is going to leave a hole in the middle of the rink. You don't want to do this. What you wanted to see was Nick Paul. He needed to shift over. You wanted to see this shifting over. You wanted to see him coming down and you wanted to see Corey Perry remaining in the slot as puck support, but he doesn't do that. This is why lengthening and widening is awesome because it forces defenders out of the position. So Corey Perry now has to go block and take a look at this. Now Nick Paul is going, oh boy, I have forgotten my job. Now I'm going to go do my job too late. Now you end up leaving a player open and because Corey Perry isn't here and you have an empty zone, now you are in trouble. You have two guys going out to block a shot. That isn't what you want. You only want one guy blocking a shot. The puck is here at the top. This is now a broken defensive zone by the Tampa Bay Lightning, but it is only broken because of the offensive pressure and the lengthening and widening by the Colorado Avalanche. So two guys up to block. Big shot ends up getting tipped here. Unbelievable that that ended up getting tipped. It gets tipped. It hits the post. It ends up bouncing back out, and it's Sturm that's going to be able to bang this one home and put it in the back of the net. It hits off Andrew Cogliano, who's actually in a battle here right now, and you're just going, oi, 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 what a goal. This right here, folks, that head shake and this player and that body language says, I did bad. I did bad. That was not, oh my goodness, that was on me. And yes, it was, Nick Paul. That was not good D-zone. You left Perry and your team out to dry. 
Great job by the Avs. Andre Vasilevsky in this overtime. Look how cool as a cucumber this guy is. Pressure on the line. Quick little snag. Whoop. That is my puck. We are moving on. Quick whistle. Vassy's also stopping breakaways in this period. Just easy, easy save. Take a look at what happens on that. I cannot believe the defenseman almost put that in on Vassy, but no problem. Once again, he makes a hard save look easy. No matter what happens here, it is Colorado's favorite son. It is Nazem Kadri who ends up on and just an unbelievable stretch pass there from Arturi Letkinen. All Letkinen does is make big plays at big times, whether it's with the Habs or whether it is with the Colorado Avalanche. Now take a look here. Who is this? Mikhail Sergachev. Who's getting burnt? Mikhail Sergachev. Who did I say drives me nuts? Mikhail Sergachev. Sergachev gets burnt by the uber-talented Nazem Kadri here who ends up moving in and shelving this one on on. Andre Vasilevsky. Now, Sergachev here isn't in bad position. He had to come up, check up, but he ends up pivoting towards the middle of the ice. And as soon as he does that, he knows he's burnt right now. What would have been the better play here by Sergachev? And I say this in hindsight because this is very difficult to do. At the end of the day, speed matters. They ended up stretching. They shouldn't have been allowed to stretch. It is not just on Sergachev. I'm just having some fun with it because I've been picking on him all series. If I was Sergachev, I'd come up and I do what's called a toes forward um turnaround or pivot, if you will. This is what we call a heels back pivot. So you can see he's actually pivoting. His heel is over here. His toe is over here. He's actually turning to skate backwards. What you actually end up wanting to do with this one here is you want to skate forwards and put your skates in this direction and then take an angle, pushing them wide. So you actually play the one on one skating forwards completely. That's how you get better gap this way. Now, when you take a look at the fact that he ends up getting turned around here, that's why I don't like the heels the heels pivot play. It just, it doesn't work at this point in time. And then as Kadri ends up getting around Sergachev, it's just a quick little chip shot and it's actually going to bury itself right up here behind Vasilevsky. There's not much Vasilevsky can do here. I mean, he's very far back into his net. That's why there is so much room here up top. It is just a really nice shot here by Kadri. But what is interesting about it is remember I told you it's going to be tough to do certain things with the puck. This is just a little whack shot. It's a little golf shot here. I mean, he He's missing a thumb at this point in time right now. I know he has it attached to his body, but it's broken. So he just ends up making the best what with what he's got, and he just shelves it, and just an absolute hero move of the game by Kadri. Him and Letkinen end up taking it home for the Avs. And that'll do it here for us today. Thank you for being here, Avs fans, Bolts fans. Don't forget to join the Discord down below. Don't forget to comment down below, and don't forget to return here for Game 5. It's beautiful out there in the summer, but it's always cold in the rink. We will catch you on the next one.